Welcome to this part of the educational series, which is designed to focus on technical analysis. Let's continue by understanding a stochastic. Stochastics are deemed as momentum indicators and are primarily used as a tool to measure overbought and oversold areas in the market at a given point in time. The values or period of a stochastic can be changed according to a trader's strategy. Like a moving average, the smaller the period one elects to use, the closer the stochastic will represent price action, comparing this to a larger period, which filters out more noise. However, this creates more lag time. One can employ levels into a stochastic to highlight the overbought and oversold status of the market. An overbought situation is considered to be a period that the market has moved up considerably, and according to the indicator and its calculations by measuring current price and historical data, highlights a potential change in momentum. This simply means that the indicator is suggesting that a potential shift in market condition may occur to the downside. An oversold condition is one that reflects the market moving lower and overstretched with a possibility of a reversal highlighted by the indicator to the upside. Let's take a look at the live market. In this case, let's focus on the currency pair of the Canadian yen on a one-hour time frame. On this chart, the values we have selected to use is 75 for the overbought status, which is highlighted by this line in this area, and 25 for the oversold area, which is represented by this line here in the upper area. As stated, a stochastic can help aid traders to identify these overbought and oversold areas. However, this does not mean that each time the indicator enters into these zones here that the market will go up or come down. Trading with a stochastic can be complicated or can be traded in a simple format when understanding its purpose. The standard or default setting for a stochastic is generally 5-3-3, three, three, as you can see here. Now these settings or parameters can be changed to higher values to eliminate noise. The lower the settings, the more the stochastic acts erratic. The higher the settings, the smoother the stochastic acts. A 5-3-3 setting can be used on higher interval time frames, such as a 4-hour chart or a daily chart. A higher setting, such as a 10-3-3, or even a 14-3-3 can also be used on these same time frames, but also on smaller time frames, such as a 15-minute chart or an hourly chart. Choosing which setting to use depends on the strategy one employs when trading with a stochastic and the type of trader they are. For instance, a scalper may elect to use a 14-3-3 stochastic on a five-minute chart, whereas a long-term trader may elect to use a 533 on a daily chart. Practice by changing the settings to find a comfortable level. Like any other tool from the trader's toolbox, a stochastic should be used in conjunction with other tools, identifying whether price is in an uptrend or a downtrend is critical in implementing a trading strategy before selecting the types of tools you will use. Off this one hour chart on the CAD yen, we'll elect to use the 1433 setting for the stochastic. Now, as stated, to use a stochastic in a trading strategy, let's identify if we are in an uptrend or a downtrend first. In this example, price is making higher highs and higher lows, illustrating an uptrend. 
Once this has been established, one must define the direction to trade in. In this case, we will look only at taking longs or a buy in the market. Firstly, we need to pay attention to the oversold area here. At this point, here. Once the stochastic enters this zone, this will govern the entry point to enter a buy order once the two lines have crossed upwards. The K period has crossed the D period line at this point. It must be stated that an entry is confirmed only when this occurs in the zone which is the oversold area, not above the area. It must be clearly in the oversold status to warrant an entry. As you can see, a buy order could have occurred at these points right here. Now, at this point here, price is making lower lows and lower highs. Therefore, we start to look for shorts or to sell. No more longs. We need the stochastic to head into the overbought area and wait for the stochastic to hook down and cross over in order to enter a short. From this example, this is the only opportunity here for a short as we know price is going down and for the first time the stochastic is in the overbought area. Apart from using price action alone to define direction when trading with a stochastic, one may elect to add a filter into the mix to ensure a more detailed strategy. Adding the Trading it MA band indicator as a trade filter could help eliminate a lot of bad entries. It's a conservative approach by adding moving averages into the equation. For instance, once price is trading above the band, as you can see at this point here, we only look for longs or to buy. As price is trading below the band, we look for shorts or to sell. What we are doing is defining the trend by saying that the MA band is the filter. Above it, we buy and below it, we sell. As you can see at these points here, price has been trading above the band, which warrants a search for a long entry. At this point, we have to look at the stochastic to make sure it's in the oversold area as it is here. Then we wait for the stochastic to hook up and cross over. Then a buy order can be executed. Typically, the close of the candle or the bar should be above the MA band. However, at times it works just as well while the candle or bar closes in the band. Once price drops below the band, looking for a long is invalidated. Even though the stochastic has entered the oversold zone here, the band filter is indicating a potential change in the trend to the downside. Therefore, the trade criteria has not been met. If we look at a short example, this is the only trade opportunity to sell the market here at this point, as price has been stair-stepping down, forming a downtrend and price is also trading below the MA band. Therefore, once the stochastic enters the overbought area, we look for a short once the stochastic has hooked down and crossed over. As you can see here, the parameters of the trade were not met. Even though the market did go lower, we did not have the stochastic in the overbought area at the time even though price was trading below the band. We need both the price to be trading below the band and the stochastic to be in the overbought area before it hooks down like here. A stop loss can be placed below the band if we're looking for longs with a profit target two or three times larger than the stop loss, ensuring a good risk management ratio. For shorts, the stop loss can be placed back above the band to ensure a small risk and the overall profit target again to be larger than the stop loss 
maximizing every trade opportunity. Trading It has designed and programmed a custom stochastic called Trading It Stochastic Buy Sell in order to help filter trading with the trend in relation to stochastic trading. This, like most custom indicators, can be found in the Trader's Toolbox section. For instance, if you look at these bars here, these represent whether or not the criteria of an uptrend or downtrend have been met. This way, traders know which direction to trade and whether or not to buy or sell. For instance, when price is trending up and the market retraces slightly or pulls back down by a small amount, the stochastic will head into the green zone. Once this occurs, the indicator, via its calculation, will highlight whether or not the market is still trending up by displaying another lighter zone within the whole oversold area. This is the stage that one looks for a buying opportunity once price is in the green zone, followed by another zone displayed, confirming that an uptrend may still be evident. In this case, the second zone is highlighted by a lime green color. What this means is that the indicator will filter the potential setups to buy and when not to buy. If both zones are not visible at that point in time, the trader may elect to skip that trade and not buy as the market may come down and not go back up. As you can see at these points right here, price was trading in an uptrend. Price went up then retraced, followed by the stochastic entering the green zone, which was then followed by the second zone, appearing to add strength to the setup. Once this occurred, then the stochastic crossed over to the up, and then a buy order could have been executed. If you note at these points right here, both zones were not displayed. We only had the stochastic entering the green zone. We did not have the second lime green zone appear, which tells us that price may come down and it's safer not to take that buy at this point. Basically, the second zone acts as a filter to add extra confirmation to this trading strategy of using the stochastic here as an entry point. Let's take a look at a sell opportunity or a short trade setup. Trading with a stochastic, we would want the market to stair step down, creating lower lows and lower highs. This way, we are trading with the overall trend direction. Once this is evident, we can look also at what the stochastic is doing. Once the stochastic enters the red zone, signifying that the market is in overbought conditions, we wait for the second zone to appear. When this happens, like right here for instance, we wait for the stochastic to hook down and cross over. Then a sell order to be executed and one can go short. Look at every time both zones are displayed at these points. The market went down and the trade would have been successful if we look at the points like here and here both zones were not visible, causing the trade to fail if a trader took a short at these points. The zone filter can be altered by the trader to use different parameters to help distinguish what they quantify as an uptrend or downtrend. They can also change the stochastic settings to best suit the time frame they wish to trade. For example, changing the MA value from 50 to 89, and the setting to 1035 could filter out better setups by the trader's discretion. Applying a stop loss below the swing for a buy is possible, and a profit target two or three times the stop loss is a money management formula that may be used when trading with these stochastic zones. The key is to apply the right risk management ratio. 
regardless of the strategy one employs. This concludes this educational series on a stochastic. Please join the largest community of traders worldwide in our free live trading room.